Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Convention with the Wii Comic Book Roundup. We've covered these X-Men books as well as a couple others. Now let's uh, move on, kicking things off. We've got The Avengers, number 10. Where we left off, while The Avengers were facing off against Mirrodin's uh, Twilight Court, Mirrodin himself went after his, his target, Kang the Conqueror. And that is where the issue begins with uh, the Avengers fighting the uh, members of the Twilight Court. And Mirrodin has made it to uh, where Kang is recovering. Mirrodin points that. Mirrodin wakes Kang and basically states that uh, Kang's Avengers are entertaining, uh, are being currently entertained by the Twilight Court. But, uh, Mirrodin points out that he and Kang are both, see, both uh, hunting the missing moment. The one second of all of history that Kron not, not such as themselves cannot access. The single moment of time that is denied to them. And men such as, as them, they don't like things being denied to them. But, uh... Adding that it's not a mere peak that uh, they seek out the uh, the moment. The moment is a locked door, and what do you suppose one keeps behind a locked door? Which can respond as the prize, the grail. And the Mirrodin and Kang agree. The ultimate prize for the ultimate adventurer. But they disagree is as to who the ultimate adventurer is, the conqueror or the wizard. And Kang states that the missing moment can only be unlocked by heroes. And Mirrodin agrees, stating, you know, that's why uh, Kang ran crying to uh, the Avengers. Meaning that uh, he would manipulate them into opening the missing moment for him. With Mirrodin wondering if I was going to despite him or, or not. But then also realizes that it doesn't matter whether that was the case. But uh, Mirrodin has decided not to kill Kang. Kang is too amusing. The rivalry, it, it, it makes Mirrodin feel alive. But uh, he's, he, and he resolves to allow Kang to continue challenging him. But Mirrodin is a poor sport. And so he'll leave Mirrodin with a handicap. Or Kang with a handicap. All of Kang's knowledge of the missing moment, of the tribulation events, stripped from Kang's mind. Mirna can't have uh, Kang holding uh, his Avengers, Avengers hands, after all. That, and that he finishes wiping that, uh, that specific knowledge from Kang's mind, just as uh, Iron Man and uh, Captain Marvel show up. But uh, Kang explains what uh, Mirrodin did to him, and of course belittles the Avengers, basically saying that they let him, they let Mirrodin do it. And uh, Kang leaves. Later, however, Thor and uh, Scarlet Witch were journeying to uh, the Nightmare's Dream Realm. Basically wanting to know... Mm 
was uh, Nightmare in League with the Twilight Court. And uh, Scarlet Witch points out that uh, Nightmare's an addict. And all bees a dream are Nightmare's fix. And so Scarlet Witch asks, what happens if uh, they end? If there are no more dr things that dream? What happens to the, f the fear of God then? What happens to the Midnight Leviathan? She asks, would he starve? Go to withdrawal, and which would be worse? Thor says that he want reminds Nightmare. He said he wanted to humble the Avengers, and Thor believed it. They believe it still, but he cloaked his true intention, his true motive in pettiness. With uh, and Nightmare wonders just what. Uh, true intention Thor alludes to and Thor states that it, it wasn't the, the event the Nightmare of the Avengers it was his that would the end of, of, of their universe which Nightmare having having tasted the mind of everything that dreams believes will happen something that frightened even the Midnight Leviathan and it wasn't an attack it was a cry for help Literally the only manner that uh, Nightmare knows how. A scary story. And that is the case. Nightmare admits it. He states that someone's going to murder the universe. Wanda asks who? Is it Mirden? But Nightmare doesn't know. They protect it. Whoever it is protects their mind too well guards their secrets even even from nightmare. He gathers uh, wisps and hints. That is, when he had the event at, the, at his mercy, he told he didn't tell them a single lie. The eighth cosmos is at dire risk. Then it will be the Avengers who either stop it or bring it to pass. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting. To be, I'm kind of glad that uh, Kang is out of the way because they kind of just... It was kind of, he was there, but they didn't do much with him. Even in the, even in the first arc. He popped up in the first couple of issues and that was that. So... Otherwise, a solid issue. Uh, I think next month with uh, Avengers is actually tying into uh, Fall of X, which is fitting given that. Uh... Oh no, not yet. not quite yet, but that is that is coming. The Avengers tying in with Fall of X. That is coming as, uh... which as I said is fitting with with Iron Man being basically. A, just as much of an X-Men as an Avenger now. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Captain America number six. Where we left off in the present, Cap was uh, taking on the, was about to face the emissary at the uh, Peace Summit, which uh, had been locked down to prevent anyone from, uh, from anyone from entering. While back in the past, Young Steve Rogers was uh, helping Meyer Lansky uh, prevent a prevent well Nazis from uh, destroying a uh, from basically doing a false flag event at a uh, at a Nazi rally on American soil. So in the past. Um, Steve and Lansky's gang are dealing with the uh, with the with the uh, German American Bund. While in the present, Cap is fighting off the emissary with the emissary. Uh, or, well, with Asmodee himself stating that uh, 
they've met before, and this time, Asmodee won't make the same mistake of letting uh, Cap live. Nissy points out that with the previous uh, killings, there were uh, magic symbol, there were magical symbols all drawn on walls. Using a, uh, a light, however, they find that as the emissary has done just that, but with uh, basically invisible ink. But uh, Steve, in the past, Steve realizes that they can that Lansky and his, Steve Lansky and his people can uh, deal with as many can punch out as many. Uh, Members of the Bund as they want, and it's not going to change the fact that the bomb is uh, is ticking. They find the truck that it's in. Doors are welded solid, windows are barred, windshields too narrow to get through. They can see the bomb, but they can't get to it. But uh, C points out he wants to get through the windshield. So, he's directed to a uh, to a big open field in Jersey that uh, Lansky's people uses Lansky's people use to dump stuff. So that's and uh, the engine's running on the truck. So planning to drive as fast as possible to get him, get it away from people. Um, hole is uh, opened up in the wall and uh, people at the summit are uh, evacuated Cheryl Sharon goes after uh, takes a shot at uh, the emissary though uh, he his current mystical abilities uh, a lot basically a lot of, seem to include a force field of sorts uh, the Steve Rogers figurine, or the Steve, Steve Strange figurine, um, explains that uh, he thinks he might have a way to, to beat the emissary, but it'll take a, a minute. And he hopes that uh, Cap can keep uh, the emissary occupied. But uh, while Steve's headed to uh, the field in the past, the bomb activates. Um, Doctor Strange sends through the uh, Eye of Agamotto, which uh, attaches itself to Steve's shield. In the past, Steve drives the uh, truck off of a bridge. Thinks about uh, what the, doc the doctor said to Steve about his mother, and uh, says he's not going to. Uh, Basically, he's not going to die today. He swims out of the uh, truck just just before it explodes. Well, in the present, uh, Cat manages to uh, defeat the emissary and get Asmodee to leave his body. It's not it's not clear what if the emissary dies or simply uh, loses consciousness. Well, in the past, Steve wakes up two weeks later, or uh, three, oh, no, not two weeks, three days, three days later. Um, apparently his health issues have gotten worse, and he's given maybe five years to live, barring a medical miracle. But a uh, member of the Bund has, has uh, Steve in the sights of a rifle, but Asmodee said, tell, Tells us not to. After all, kids are gonna die, going to suffer and die, die in pain. You know, even better than a quick death. However, the flashback ends with uh, Steve Rogers be, being introduced to Dr. Abraham Erskine. Back in the present, um, Sailing, the uh, the contractor that uh, 
Steve hired to uh, help with renovations of the apartment building that he bought has finished and Steve offers uh, sailing a job as the, the building manager since he's been staying in the uh, manager's apartment during the renovations. However, uh, sailing his family are moving to Seattle. His wife has uh, has family there who, who can help them and there's a large Korean community in a good school for nearby for, uh, their, for his son. As, you know, as they part ways, Steve tells Sailing to, uh, you know, wishes him luck, and it, it says, hey, if, you know, if I can ever be of, of help, let me know. But uh, one of the, uh, Mrs. Rosen, who lives in the building, walks by and uh, she says she can't blame uh, Sailing and his family for leaving. But uh, she mentions the fact that you know, he, you know she she mentions that there was something that they didn't tell that say they didn't tell him. And simply states that uh, they, that Steve should go to the street where uh, Sally kept his his work van even after they moved they moved in. And Steve goes, seeing. Swastika's paint on the wall, as well as uh, former Get Out, America for Americans, stuff like that. And while Steve paints over it, he thinks about uh, you know the difference between those those who uh, espouse fascism and those who uh, stand against it. Adding himself among those who stand against fascism, and that is where the issue ends. Good run so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see how uh, story play carries on. Um, I'm also curious as to whether or not uh, I go to a bit being curious as to whether or not the emissary died or simply was just exhausted from being possessed by a demon. Moving on though to our next book, we've got Sensational She-Hulk number five, where we left off. Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, had uh, enlisted Patsy Walker, Hellcat, to uh, invite uh, her and Jen Walters, She-Hulk, uh, for a night out. It was a ruse so that uh, Carol could talk to Jen, Name in part about what happened uh, a couple issues ago. However, demons showed up because, well, yeah. And so, She-Hulk, Hellcat, and uh, Captain Marvel are dealing with, deal with the demons. Though, uh, Captain Marvel is told to uh, not use energy blast her energy blast. Just stay close, uh, you know. Just use her fists, and Carol doesn't really want to because well, he just like sulfur. However, something worse than demons show up. Patsy's ex-husband, Damon Hellstrom, son of Satan, Lord of Hell. Titles, titles. Claims that since he's got his throne back, he's trying to basically bend fences in both figurative and literal, and literal ways. That includes bending the borders of his particular realm of hell. And so, he uh, returns all of the demons, lesser demons, a lot of them, to help. Uh, Patsy accuses him of uh, saging the whole thing, but uh, it seems he actually didn't. So there's no postscript saying, showing that uh, he exactly did. Uh, and uh, afterwards,
Uh, Carol at least offers, makes the offer of Avengers membership to uh, Jen. Um, Patsy says, hey, you know, she'll, she'll, you know, if, if Carol's out recruiting, she'll, she'll, she's it down and join. Besides, the Avengers ID she uses for discounts is about 10 years old. But, uh, with, with Jen, Carol's serious. You know, give it, you know, she, Carol, Jen would have a room with a view, a seat at the table, nothing auxiliary about it. And next time she has a week like the week before, she won't be alone. Jen says she'll think about it. But uh, Patsy also kind of backs out of her volunteering, volunteering to be to rejoin the Avengers. Says, uh, "Well, she ruined the furniture." Though Carol says, "What's a couple of couches?" Jen returns home, talks some with uh, Jack of Hearts. Apparently, uh, may, mainly. Uh, Talking about the what happened during uh, Avengers Assembled. Apparently, Jack has read his file. He knows that he exploded and seemed, and until and before a retcon killed Scott Lang, and it, then before an additional retcon killed Cassie Lang. Uh, but she also talks about how you know she also lost control that day and you know attacked the Avengers. But as a, you know, they. You know, she, basically, they were being manipulated by both being manipulated by Scarlet Witch. It's a whole ass thing, and um, apparently, and the two Jen hulks out, and the two of them hug since Jack uh, absorbed drained a nuclear warhead while she was at, at the at Patsy's favorite bar, and that is where. The issue ends. Solid issue. I, I honestly would not mind seeing She-Hulk join this, the current Avengers lineup. And not just when everyone comes together all at once to deal with the big, whatever big cr event is happening at that particular moment. Moving on, though, to our last book for the moment, we have House of Slaughter. Doesn't appear there is a listed issue number. Anyways, this could actually just be a new number one, but um, the slaughter drag, the dragon of House Slaughter, and the, and the dragon of uh, House Boucher meet in New Orleans. Basically wanting to, the intention being to strengthen the ties between their houses, but pointing out that uh, Jace Boucher is a problem. But, uh, the dragon of, uh, House Slaughter offers to, uh, take care of Jace, so the dragon of, uh, House Boucher points out that, uh, they don't have, that House Slaughter currently doesn't have a, a black, a, uh, white mask, and, uh, in fact, their last white mask, you know, seemingly is on the run from the order. 
that would be uh, Eric Slaughter. Meanwhile, uh, Jay saves some folks in the bayou. And learns that uh, the two houses, that houses of Slaughter and, and Boucher, are working together to come after him. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting uh, start to things. Um, I do wish there was an actual uh, issue never given, but yeah. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Blue Sky, Mastodon, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.